My name is Thomas Ngarajola. I'm the head instructor for Shaolin Self-Defense Centers. The name of the art that we teach is Shaolin Kempo Karate. I'd like you to welcome to our instructional video for the rank of green with brown stripe. This is the eighth in a series of 11 tapes which are designed to support the teachings from the instructor, not to replace them. We have a lot of information on the video here, so let's get started. One of the first things is the stances. This is a bow stance, a reverse. This is the horse stance from the side, and this is a half moon stance. If you take in between, you lean forward. If you're doing a punching technique, that's a forward bow stance. If you lean back, as if you were blocking, that would be a reverse bow stance. So it's in between the horse and the half moon. You have the forward bow and the reverse bow. You'll see it in movements. Let's have our assistant John come on out. Thank you, John. Okay, from here, let's say I block a kick and I'm leaning away. See the reverse bow? Then I might come in with a forward bow. Bow and arrow, bow stance, forward leaning, backward leaning stance. Watch it from this side here. He kicks, I lean away, and then I come back in. Not totally. This knee does not go massively over your foot. Just from here, you block, and then you come in. Just a little more dramatic. Don't go too low and try to get too much out of it. If you want to do it for exercise when you're doing a form, that's fine. So from here he kicks, boom, in, right in. There's a trap and lock, a trapping block. You have your palm blocks, you have your circle blocks. If you do the two together, that's a trap and lock. Most people think that a trap and lock is a very kind of risky thing. Like you're pulling a punch out of the air like a magician pulls a rabbit out. It's not like this. That's wrong. What it is is you're blocking this area of your body here and you're blocking this area of your body here. Two blocks that converge. When either one touches, it's the radar that tells you to lock on. From the other side, so you can see from here, that touches that touches. Whatever gets there first, then I lock on. Then I'll be doing kicking maneuvers from there or whatever. So this is a trap, trapping block, trap and lock. The instructor used different words. It's basically a palm. Doesn't matter. You can do it to the inside too and be going into movements later on. The next technique I like to work on is a leopard paw. Front to knuckle, right here. Don't have it too far back like this. You'll injure your hand. Nice and level, right in. So you could be kicking, you could be blocking with the bow, and coming right in. To here, or inverted, would be this way. Striking with this knuckle section here. You could also be coming underneath into the nerve joints, striking in here, in here, coming around to his back, into here. The leopard paw is designed to be the sport model of the front two knuckle punch to get into those hard to reach places. Especially if he puts his jaw down, I might not be able to get in there with a punch, but the leopard paw will fit right in. The next one is the trigger finger. Take the thrust punch, control these three here, tight in, push down, protrude that knuckle out, striking straight in, right from here. You can also use it as a blocking mechanism that's called the phoenix eye when you do it that way. Here, trigger finger. Straight in. It might not look hard, but eventually you can even board break with it. I wouldn't advise you to do that right away. So right from here, just boom, right in. It's a very, you can actually knock somebody out quite easily, almost more easily than this shot, because the energy is so focused, right in. So get it right in, you're loose, right in, in, right in. This is probably the best spot to do it right from here. Another technique is called the spinning hook kick. From here, I'm going through these just to get you orientated to the basic moves. You have your hook kick from the earlier ranks, and you can be hooking in this way. The spinning hook just kind of comes around this way, right around here. You can also be doing it to his backside. Before when I was going to John's face, you notice I was using the back part of my foot. Here I was using the heel. So if you just put his hand up, open your hand up, 
I'm going to kind of slap it with the bottom part of my foot in here, that way, or just make a little title hit with my heel that way. It would be nicer when you're doing it up to the face to use the back part of your foot. I think John would appreciate that. But on the bag, work on both. So from here, let's use his hand for focus. Boom, right in. Always fake this way first, turn, come around. Either way you're doing it, this way or this way. Right in. You could be also doing it as a setup for other things. It's the same thing as the hook kick, just with a spin. The next technique, let's say you swept your opponent down. It's called the dropping and rising heel kick. Axe kicks are like that. Heel kicks are very linear in nature. So the rising heel kick, let's say you were down doing something to him, you'd rise up and then you'd drop. Again, from here, say you were down here, and you wanted to go that way, you'd rise up, whoom, then down. Again, from here, you would be down here, you see you were fighting like this, you just banged his head up the concrete, whatever you were doing, and you wanted to leave. Strike him on the way up, boom, on the way down, boom, right that way. Good, come on up. This part of the tape is designed to teach you just the basic building blocks of the rank of Greenwood Stripe. Basic technique on sweeps and takedowns is called an arm bar. Let's say you block, just say you did the trap. You take this hand, keep it near your belt, take this hand, press on the back of his elbow. That's a basic arm bar technique inherent to most martial arts systems. From here, you've probably done this many times before, but now you're gonna be actually trying to do it during sparring. He throws a punch, boom, this stays here, and this goes right here. That's an armbar technique. There's many versions of it that you'll get. Another one is coming in here using ankle manipulations. How might you do it? Let's say you swept your opponent down and he, his leg came up. You might use this as a way to get him to flip over so that you can come in. So from here, let's say you were this way. And now I'm in a different spot. I might use an ankle manipulation. However, I'm here just talking the ankle boom, to get into a position that I can do things to him. All you have to do, is very simply, is just twist the ankle very hard this way. You can go this way too, but this way works much better than this way. I mean, it would be so violent, you actually would feel the injury. We're doing it kind of slow so you can feel it. If you do it like this, that would be, we're not going to do that. Right over. From here, I mean, you can do all sorts of movements into the back. The last type of sweep takedown, that is unique to the rank of a uh, green with brown stripe. It's called a leopard tackle. Now you might say, why in the middle of a self-defense situation would you sacrifice an upstanding position, do something to come in, tackle your opponent with your feet like that, and then do techniques to him? Well, you might not be doing it that way. I could be standing here talking to you, all of a sudden somebody grabs me from the back side. I strike him, I strike him, and then I go into a technique where I use the leopard tackle. So come on up. The leopard tackle basically is from the side. And one foot goes high, other foot goes low, and you let your hips. <laughs> you can see that. You can, the power is going to be right there. Right in here. See? And go. Then what you do after is entirely up to you. So the leopard tackle is just from here. It's right in here. And you might be coming in here, maybe you want to do a spinning kick. He blocks it. He grabs it. You go. Boom. I did a forward that time. And then you would hit and go in from there. Thank you, John. So you have your reverse bow, your forward bow, your trapping locks, your leopard paws, your trigger fingers, your dropping and rising heel kicks, and boom, your spinning hook kicks. Practice the basic foundation. You'll see these moves come through the rest of the tape. Next, I like to work on the Kempo techniques. And let's start with the first one, which is called Leopard Tackles Its Prey. Just move this way a little bit. From here, our opponent punches in. Palm block. Sneak into position. Leopard pour. Leopard pour. 
roundhouse elbow. Let's watch that part again. From here, he strikes in, and everything flows. The whole body goes right into him. So from here, one, two, three. This collapses into this. John's body now should be in that position. Come through, and I'm going to try to pick up my roll, one or two of his legs. See the technique from before? Now, get my rear end up. Boom, drop my axe. Turn, tripod position. Boom, side kick. And then get up and look around. Let's try from the other side. In here, either side. Block, strike, strike, strike. This is leopard tackle this prey. Now he's going to be in a way back position like this because you did the collapse. You're going to basically go into a roll, try to pick up this leg, this leg, or his upper body as you go. Boom. Drop. Remember how you'd be using it. Each one of these moves is designed so that you can use individual parts. Let's do it in the air together, John. Ready? Block. Leopard. Leopard. In. Over. Turn. Drop, strike. That's how it looks in the air. Let's get started on the next one, which is leopard rolls through the high grass. From here, block, strike. Notice how his body comes in, and I'm in here. Roll to the outside, striking to the back. You'll see that in a minute when we do it on the other side. Come in, just don't come here, get in there. Control, control, presence here. Roll him, go down to your knee. Press his head, here. Don't let go when you strike, Cuss. Strike. It hurts a lot more when we hold the press. Let's do it from the other side. Leopard rolls through the high grass. In, in. Right from here. So here like this, one. And get out here and strike up into the lower back region. Come in, grab, roll, press. Right in there. Let's do leopard rolls through the high grass in the air. Block, strike, block, strike, get in position, grab them, roll them, right in. We did it in the air so you can see how it looks different. On bodies and air is always different. Remember, practice moves righty and lefty. Next one, let's move this way a little bit. His leopard climbs down the tree. I'm the leopard, he's a tree, I'm gonna climb down. Block, inverted leopard, Stay the guard, hammer to the rib, uh, solar plex area, groin. This takes down here, this takes there. There's the dropping, rising heel, up, boom, with the break, turn, step on his arm if it's available, knee to his ribs if it's open, strike to the throat, crescent kick to this side of the head. Look around. Let's do that again from the other side. Opponent strikes in, boom, in, 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 take down, up, down, that's a break right there, in, strike, crescent kick, that direction. One more time, from here, you're going to be going one, in, in, take down. So he strikes in, and Boom, that's how that'll look right there. In, don't do that right fast that right away. Get your control going so you don't hurt your partner. Let's do leopard climbs down the tree. Block, strike, 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 initiate the takedown. Notice how we kept moving in. Kick, turn, and finish. Very good. Next, in unique, three tempos, three combinations we're going to get into. Combination number 21. As your opponent strikes in, you block right in there. Feel John's body jump. Be very careful. There's, there's a lot of internal nerve strikes going on. You're going to be learning later. Come underneath. Do a three block by breaking the arm. Hammer to the back of the head. Get in position. Do a tiger stomp takedown, and guess what? There's the hook. 
You can see the hook later on too in another move. From here, in, through, hit, kick, and out. Let's do it from lefty, from here, so in here. Come to the back, hit. You can also kick the leg out this way. And as he goes down, then spin. Either way. Let's do 21. From here, initiate the first move. Boom. Get behind. Kick out the leg. Finish. And look around. Number 16. You're going to be doing an initial check. This is a side kick. This is kind of like an inside leg check, right from in here. And you're going to be trying to injure, shock, stun the arm. Our nurse is going to keep coming back. Here's the arm bar. See how it all fits together? Close here. Press. Bring it in for a landing. Come over with an axe to the base of the skull. Securing the arm, possibly breaking. You feel that right there, John? Mm -hmm. From here, step. This is presence, controlling. Strike down. Let's do 16 again from the other side. Here. That's going to cause his upper body to come down. It's very injurious here. Boom. Guide him down for a landing. See, right in here, crescent axe, snap, and then right in. Let's do 16 in the air from here. We trap, boom, yank back, over, and finish. Right in there. Very important to see us doing it in the air. That's why we're doing it, because you'll be at home practicing in the air, so you want to know how it looks. And the last one I believe we need to work on today is number 11. Let's start at lefty. I don't know if I'm confusing you by going right and left, but you want to have be ambidextrous. And this is a good camera shot right here. It's a block from a cat. Actually, it's a strike. Right, John? There's that trigger. Come up. Take his head. Bring it down into here and hit here. A little different than the other takedown in the Kempo. Knee. Here's an ankle manipulation. Take the ankle and throw it right over here near this little part of the grass here. Strike down. Here's the ending with the dropping rising heel. Look around. Let's do it again. From here. Block. Where the strikes, it gets its head down. And this is tied in internally to this spot here too. Come up. This right here, bringing it down this way. This hitting in here will continue the movement. Boom. Right in. Get the ankle. Bring it different than I did before. That's fine. Manipulate the ankle. Boom. By the time he gets there, I'm going to be going with him. Come on back. Whew. Throw it. Be very careful with that. Don't even do the throw. You don't want to injure your partner's back. Drop. Boom. See the weight there? Boom. Up. Good one up. Let's do 11 in the air. Walk through pace. Retreat. Shoom, strike, boom. Initiate the takedown, boom. Follow up with the knee, take him over, and drop, and finish. Very good. Thank you, John. Those are the official movements. This whole video will give you all the official techniques in our curriculum for the rank of green with brown stripe. Practice the campos, practice the combinations. Lefty, righty, on a partner but also practice the isolated techniques so when you go later into your sparring you no mind club, knives, and guns got that out in one breath you can utilize these concepts they're not just for working on a partner standing up that's just the way we teach you how to remember it now let's get started on five pinion in front position, bow, horse, dragon's breath, chi building exercise, cat stance, three block, two block, half moon stance, palm block, front two knuckle punch, retreating, leopard paw with a presence down here. Repeat, block, block in the cat, block and strike, cut, Leopard paw. Come into a pine tree. X block down. Half moon forward. X position up. Seizing trap. 
rising sun fist, half moon forward, driving the front two knuckle punch in. Retreating back to a horse, striking, presence, blocking, striking, or faking, or guarding. We'll go over that later. Seizing, crescent, roundhouse, cross stance, block and strike, or presence with your two hands. Turn over, look, iron wall position, step, cross position. We'll be explaining that in detail. There's that leaning position, that bow position, block and strike. Here we go. There's another one, forward, with a block and a ridge. Keep those fingers not open, keep them back. Grab, backward leaning, or the reverse bow stance. Check that cat, you should be in that cat momentarily. It'll be very quick from here. Boom, in, and back. I'm gonna do it as a walkthrough pace facing away from you. Then we'll have John come out, we'll work on some application, then we'll do it again. I'm trying to show you each move. work on some of the application and then we'll get back to the showing you the form one more time. You notice in the previous tapes, just like three pinion, when he comes in towards me, this hand's going to be blocking and this hand's blocking or it's blocking the same hand. Boom. Or opposite hands. This hand strikes or blocks and then from here, switch your feet so we can see a little better here. This could be coming in here and hitting down to the groin or hitting the face in the groin. This could be blocking one of his arms and then going into his throat. Or, one of my favorites is to hit the face here, hit here, hit the solar plexus, and strike back in. Whichever way you're doing it, that's fine. Just remember how it looks in the air. When you do the opposite side, it's the same exact thing. But we'll try to do a different technique. From here, he blah. I'm in here. From here, he throws the punch. Boom, somehow he grabs one of, he grabs my bottom, bottom arm. I chop it, and then I'm in. Watch it again, from here. Boom, somehow he gets a hold of my bottom arm. I chop, seize, protect, and then I'm in. The next maneuver, position there's somebody here, somebody comes in with a kicking motion, and I'm blocking down, and I, I go right up. So as I block down, the weight comes down, I go right into the neck region. Seize them, disperse them. Now somebody else is coming in this way. And what I'm going to be doing is kind of blocking and striking. Let's do that from this angle right here. Kind of blocking and striking right up underneath. The rising sun fist motion, driving into the solar plexus. Let's watch that again. He kicks. Boom, in, boom. I also could be doing some funny things to him right here. That's up to you. Let's keep it simple, but at first. Your instructor will be showing you lots of things. And somebody else is going to be coming in from here. Going to be coming. I could just be blocking or I could just be striking. Hit. Boom. Then from here, somebody sneaking up behind. So all you're doing is hitting him like this. Wham. And hitting the other guy like this. When you do that open movement, you could be blocking, grabbing, crescent kick, roundhouse elbow, and then dispersing your opponent. The reason why you would use the cross stance. Let's get to that in one second. You can also be doing this from here, hitting him in the solar plexus, grabbing his head, crescent, hitting him in the back, and then dispersing him that way. To generate power, when there, where there is no space, you can drop, but you can also cross the second part of the back part of your body. So when you use a cross stance, you can be using it as elusiveness when you're fighting, but also as a way to set up sweeps or to generate power. So from here, that sequence goes from here. I'm going to be blocking this arm. Crescenting to the back. Run us elbowing to the head. And then dispersing. The next sequence, right from here, when you're like this. Let's come on over here so we can see from here. Somebody calls your name. You hear something coming. You want to look quick. You look. Your hands go up. 
Now what's going on? I've heard lots of interesting explanations over the years. I'm sure you have also too. Some people say you were going for a f jumping kick towards them, some sort of jumping kick, and you decide to bail out and trap some sort of weapon or one of his kicks, and you came down upon it. I guess you could be saying that. One of my best visualizations I get to use, John's over here hitting somebody and they're fighting. Pitch, he's like that. He's, he's back to bent over a bit, and you're using your block as a striking mechanism, boom, into the side kidney area, kind of a battering ram technique. Or you can be using it to come down onto a, you want to do a jumping kick and then you use it as a block. The next move, will you block and strike, very similar to this, just throw a punch. You know, whatever, right in here, or the other hand, you know, right in here like this. The next sequence, when you come back in this way and you turn, your instructor might be giving you different visualizations, that's fine. You block and you strike here. So you can be grabbing the groin, yanking the head back. Or you could be blocking this hand in here, hitting in here, and just striking on the way out. Another thing you could be doing, <laughs> you could be blocking, striking, then John goes to throw a kick with his uh, left foot at me, and I kind of just block. See, I kind of just blocked it with this hand, and I didn't really know what he was doing. That's kind of open up. Or I could be here in a fight with John, and he just throws, um, I went to strike him, and then he goes to throw a kick at me. Boom, I use this hand. Or, I'll show it again, just like a high crescent up with this foot. Boom, that hand, either way. Then you'll have your cat position, and you're gonna repeat on the same side, doing the same things. Maybe some John rushes at me after I try to block and strike, and he comes at me with something. Boom, I'm right there. So it could be a retreating motion, or you could be using this stuff as you hit the groin, you got the groin, and you're dumping them that way. Both will work fine. Thank you, John. Let's do five pinion together, nice and slow. Back up a little bit. Okay. If you see slightly different hand positions, stuff like that, sometimes our forms, there's different visualizations I give, and depending on what visualization you're doing, the movement can be slightly different. Let's do five pinion. Let me do the other side. In. And. Press it. Deep. Land. Control that body. Good. Thank you, John. When you're doing your moves, control your body. If somebody's going to attack me, I got to control them. Before I control them, I got to control myself, mentally and physically. Learn to control your body, make it do what you want to do. Now I'd like to show to you the Joe Staff form. It's the first weapon, it's a very basic weapon, it's also very intriguing. Let's get started with the Joe Staff form. From here, I'll do it once facing you. I'll have John come out, work on some application, then we'll do it once again. So don't worry about trying to learn the whole thing. Let the instructor work with you. Up, let it ride your forearm. Down and up. First stance, left stance, right kick, strike, strike. Keep that in close. Poke, four. Strong block, right in there, really rooted. Drop, ugh. Leap out of the way, down, over, control, in, cover, poke, come back, come around, drop, right, left, in, control, kick, let him see this tip up here, quick kick, another kick, poke, cat, very strong, the whole body does the work, Horse stance, poke, come around, big swing, clearing the space, strong block. Duck poke, block, drop, whip into a cat, left half moon, twist into a horse, look, a little twirl and finish. Let's have John come out and work right on this. There's a lot to talk about in this. Okay, 
When you're doing your bow, just keep it up against your forearm. Keep it over there and here. When you do your first move and he's swinging the staff at you, just it's a nice block. From there you kick and strike and strike. Keeping it close, not far away. Traditionally, when application is discussed against a weapon, the first application you're taught is to verse the weapon that you're doing it against. This could be a broomstick, a painter's pole, doing it against somebody barehanded with a knife or anything. From here, the next maneuver, come on this side. I just did this, boom. He goes to take a big swing at me. Before he gets in, I get to him. Notice my body position is defensive, and I get to him before he gets to me. That's key. Very similar to the five pinion rising sunfish concept. See how it all goes together? And boom. The next maneuver is that strong block. So what happens here, he comes in, and you just block here. You disperse him, and you strike. Another one, is one of my favorites, is you block the same move, and when he presses, see I'm not off balance, I'm in a good position. I lock this in, hitting his hand, and getting rid of it. It's a nice, simple initial application. From here, John's gonna be over here now, he's gonna take a swing like that at me, and then another swing. What you're gonna do, it's kinda like in the Statue of the Queen, where you jump out of the way, you hit like this, you're gonna jump out of the way and get your body out of the way in the first we'll do the first one first from here as he swings i'm going to just get my body out of the way so i'm going to hop up and hop forward and just get out of the way as he goes go like a little low towards the knee area that's what it's for boom as he comes around the second time and he's going for my lower legs i have to block remember in the statue of the crane when he throws a kick watch my hands well i'm doing the same thing here but now it's staff versus staff as he comes in with the swing. Boom. So from here, I'm like this. Boom. He comes around with the first one. I'm hopping out of the way. And boom. Right in there. When you do the hop, the first one, leave this here. Just protect your back. So in case he hits it by accident, hit my back, I would move and be able to do something from that position. Right in from there. So he swings. Boom. And boom. And then I'll be coming in right over on top of his head right afterwards. Learning to control your tip, control your fingers, control your tip. From here, the next sequence, perhaps he's trying to grab my staff. I pull it back and I kick him. Or he's trying to, that would be from here. Perhaps he's trying to grab my staff and I move it out of the way. As he goes, watch, I move it away two inches, come over and smack down and then I come in with a poke. The next sequence as you come back, you basically just, you know how when you do your hands and you're doing this and you're just moving your hands around? Well, from here, also, whenever you drop your stick, just don't drop it. Drop it the way that I did from there. And when you pick it up, don't have bad posture. Pick it up with good posture. Never reach for anything and you won't reach in a fight. That's what I was taught. This is just moving out of here. And at some point, you're deceitful and you come out of it. Or he swings something and you block and you'd come in on him. And then the next move would be strike right, strike left. And then from here, I'm fighting John. I hit him over here. Picture you're coming in at me. I just know from here, let's use the person in the camera here. I just hit John like this. You're focused. I just used this end. You're focusing in this end. Cool. This end comes right out. Cool. Right in there. Sneaks right out. Boom. And catches you again. From here, somebody comes at me and they're coming at my leg, I get my leg out of the way, and I come back in. Or from here, he's throwing a kicking technique at me. I get my leg out of the way, he lands, I kick him. He sees this, his eyes go to this. He's concerned. I do a quick leg check, another leg kick, and then a big poke. The next sequence, he comes in from over here. Maybe he swings the staff at my legs. I block, I come in, hit his hands, or hit him in the back. A lot of times I will do techniques where I block and I intentionally hit the person on the hands. He doesn't have a weapon now. Or he could be coming in with his one foot. I block and I hit him across here and I go back. And then I hit him across the back of the head. So you'll be hitting at that guy and then coming in, hitting him there. Or you poke this guy and you're just getting everybody around you to get away. Because I lift this up, he sees it, he thinks I'm poking him. Wham! I went low. Snuck it around. And it'll be a big strong block. 
come over here, John. Need multiple opponents for this. He swings at my head. I block. I could just letting him bypass and trapping him too. Or I could be blocking. And then he goes past me. And a quick little stun shot. Or again, I could be blocking, coming in, trapping against my body, and hitting in that way. The next sequence is my most favorite of the form. And when I'm doing belt evaluations, I really look for the body concepts here. As he comes in with a kick or with a staff movement, I come in and I just block him off to the side. Traditionally, he was taught to me a little bit lower. So he comes in lower and I just bypass him here. I come in to his body here and then down here. Watch how those legs work. Let's do it against a kick just so we can see. I'm in this position. Boom, the cat. Now watch, I go from the left cat to a left half moon. Look at that body strength. And I turn over, wham! Great. And then from here, all this is, is you're just looking and kind of a little gunslinger technique there. A little sugar on top. Let's do the Joe Staff form one time, nice and slow. Back up a little bit. Let's see if we can fit this in here for you. Let's do it both. I have my red tip here. I think your red tip fell off. Later on, you could be doing bladed weapons. A lot of times we teach it one tip with a certain color so you can just follow it. From here, let's do the bow. The forward sequence. Before we move on further with the grab techniques and club techniques, my cameraman just alerted me that we had a little sound problem when I was doing the uh, staff at the end. That probably work out to our advantage, so you can focus in on the body movements, because that's really what I wanted you to key on, and that's what I was saying. I really wasn't saying anything in particular, I was just talking about the turns and the moves. Let's get started with the no mind back grabs with motion. From here, we'll be using this club in a minute right here. Okay. We have done back grab techniques before. A person grabs you here, hold on, simple ones, and you back kick, you come over, and you do your techniques. We've done the techniques where you, you know, he grabs you in here, and you flip him over, and stuff of that nature. What we mean here, different, is you're coming up to your opponent, and you're grabbing him, and you're moving him. He's moving you. He's moving you. All of a sudden, that beautiful move you have with the set footwork doesn't work so good. So John's going to come up, and he's going to grab me. And let's say my move before was to do this, to back kick him and to come around. All of a sudden, he's moving me forward. I can't, my footwork is different. I had to take an extra step or two. And maybe from here, he leans over, and now he's over me, and something different goes wrong. So from here, let's work on he's pushing me forward, and I'm moving. From here, don't, if you resist him, you're going to fall. So as he comes in, you just turn, boom, and take him right around and over, and then start fighting from there. Let's watch that again. So take all the concepts you've learned before and apply them with some forward. Actually, do each technique you think you have and have your guy push you forward, pull you backwards, shake you side to side, and you might have to adapt to put some new moves on. For instance, let's say he's shaking you side to side a little bit, and he's got you, and you're like that, and he's about, he's trying to come over on you, like this. You go to do this to him, all of a sudden you lose your balance. You might have to kind of go into that leopard tackle concept and go from in there. See how that works? That's what I mean, grab the club. Not so much actual technique, but take what you have before and putting motion with it. That's the key. Also, we've done many clubs before. Swinging, slashing, dropping. I think the last time he was holding you like this. Now, John's gonna be using the club against my body in some way. So from here, he comes in and, and he uses it. And he's pushing me, maybe he's trying to run me up against the wall. Just put one hand to your body, 
one hand up, turn it. I know it looks kind of simple, but actually it is. That's what the idea was. He's pushing, maybe trying to push up against the wall. If he's got, so when he's trying to push up against the wall, one hand goes to your center, the other hand goes over, and maybe you just work on kind of flipping him right over. Boom. If he's got you up against the wall, then your technique is going to have to be a little bit different. You have to do a stun shot, collapse, and then come in with a technique. From here, let's say he's got you from behind. A lot of people always are worried about that. Somehow uh, he puts it behind on me. Okay. And he's got in here. If he has you down here along the body, like this, it's pretty much a simple back grab. You just hit here and you can roll him forward. Or again, you can use that leopard tackling concept and go that way. You can even put a lock up on him. Just simply with your leg. Just keep your leg. You can get that in the camera and hit locked in here. If he gets you around the throat region and he's pulling you back, it's not a good position. You got to elbow, get in. But to tell you, the staff is kind of easy because you can always torque it. So from here, he's got it. You can always torque it and then hit. And then from here, you got decisions to make. What you're going to do? What I would like to do is just kind of lean using my rear end right here on his back here. Pull up and then turn and then strike. This is an experience. That's what we're looking for. You to have your experience. Can you grab the knife and club for us? Uh, the knife and gun. It's to experience working with different weapons. The whole key to the second, the first part of the curriculum in the video is the set techniques. The second part we're working on now is exploring your options to get experience and awareness with different things. So from here, this is what I'm working on. I believe this is a uh, poking knife, correct? From here, he's coming in. When you, a natural motion is going to be to flex out. Get it, turn it, pull it in. You could be doing things like breaking this way, going for total flips, going into that arm bar from earlier. You've probably been doing the arm bar lots of times before. You could be in here like this, come in, hua, hua, and then go into that. From here, if you happen to get it this way, and you're here like this, you can come in this way, cut across his back here like this and then just drop him right onto his arm, I don't want to break it, in that way. Whatever you do when you're doing with the poking, don't stop here. It's going to be very hard to stop his forward momentum. So it's, that's just a quick little turn and you get into position, whatever you're doing, from there or from there. We'll be going back poking in this way later, but if you get caught up and somebody's trying to thrust a knife into you, block and stay close. In fact, that'll actually be very similar to the gun technique that we'll be giving you. And whenever anybody has long hair like this, don't hesitate to use it. It's a very good, uh, wherever his head goes, his body's going to follow. Boom. Be very careful when you do your techniques. Do you have the gun with you? Great. Fantastic. He's a handyman. He's everything with him. I believe this is guns back close range. We did frontal last time. Remember the techniques we worked on last time? Going in here and coming around. Now it's from the back. Let's say he has it up into your back this way. When you do this, what I want to do is go give up, work on giving up, speak to your instructor about the significance of the number 39, including your wallet or purse. Uh, I always tell people to carry around like $39, like a 20, a 10, a 5, and a few singles. Keep it all together there with the 20 and 10 on the outside, so it's like you have a lot of money. So if you go to give him your wallet, and he takes and he's looking at it for a split second, or he just kind of looks at how much money there, it looks like there's some money there. You toss your wallet, so you go, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? What do you want, sir? Please, 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 please take my wallet, please. And then you go. I dropped it, I gave up, dropped it that way. If he came for the money, he's going to go for the money. If he came to shoot me, he's probably shot me already. Or, he's got to hit me, he's got to aim good, he's got to work, he's got to aim, he's got to hit me, he's got to get me in the right spot. You can speak to any police officer about statistics about how effective most people are, ineffective they are with the gun. From here, I'm not advocating that you do that, but you just give up, toss and turn. If you're going to do a technique, when you give up, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? I look back this way to see where his feet were, get a sense of where he is, how big he is, but more importantly to see if there's anybody else back there, if there's a curb, other things, to get aware of my environment. Okay, okay, I'm just going to go for a while, okay? Okay, get your money. When I get him talking, that's when I move. The human brain takes a little longer to react when he's talking. So from right in here, boom. 
Don't be far away. Stay close. Come in, hit to the base of the skull, then go directly down to the floor in one of those arm bar techniques. And then from there, just whoo, whoo. Just do it again from a different side. Maybe you can hold it in your left arm so they can see it right from in here. What do you want? What do you want? Please, please don't hurt me. Oh, please. Okay, I'm just going to reach for my wallet, okay? Okay, get permission to move. Get permission to move. Right in. And then I always like taking him forward because you can control his shoulder and right where he's at. And that would break right there. Many times when you come in with that strong movement in here, the gun's going to go up. He's also going to be dropping it, too. Thank you, John. These are just awareness concepts to get you going with your techniques. Not to say that you have to do it exactly like that. In fact, I'd rather have you not do it exactly like that. Follow the principles. Awareness. Everything is about awareness and experiences. Let's get started on the uh, awareness drill, which uh, is a little uh, called sticky hands. From here, what's going to happen, I'm going to move my arms around, and John's just going to follow me. He's going to get a nice relaxed stance, and he's just going to follow me. He's just going to follow me. Wherever my hands go, he's just going to follow me. I'm playing follow leader. My hand goes this way. It's an awareness drill. Then he leads, and I follow. I'm just going to follow him wherever he goes. Just kind of hanging on, a little presence there, like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play offense. I'm going to come at John. He's just going to kind of block. Don't block with too much stress in your body. I'm going to be making motions towards him and just kind of going in and like that. And I'm offense. He's defense. Now he's offense and I'm defense. I'm just kind of blocking, going with the flow. You can have some little bit of movement with it, but don't be all over your dojo. From here, boom, like this, like this. Now, the real drill is, and it should be, oh, it comes later. From here, let's do offense and defense at the same time. I go for John's face, but let's say I leave an opening. Coom, and I get him, and he gets me. What is that? That's no good. So we try to stop his openings while I get to him. He's going to be doing to try to do the same to me. And we just move around. Maybe try to, again, forget about one hand and then get the other one in. He'll probably try to do the same to me. It's just an awareness to get your body and used to the way he's moving in here and get a feeling. If I bring up a leg, you can even bring up a leg check. You have to bring up a leg check on me. And you're just moving. And you're just moving. Don't go like this. You're going slow and wham! Somebody goes 90 miles an hour. We've all seen that before. It's a nice awareness show. Let's get very sticky. Very kind of like all over them in here. Breathe. And you're just moving right around all in here like this. Now here's some tricks. Let me show you some actual tricks. From here, come in this way and slip your elbow in and your hammer. That's a nice little trick. Elbow hammer. Well, get him worrying about this hand. Sneak this one very quietly. Watch my right hand. Doosh. Little tricks. You'll come up with your own. But it'll come very good when you're sparring and you kick and you get here and all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh, you feel that sensitivity right there. Okay. Practice it often with a partner. And usually it's a good warm-up before class. Now let's get into the uh, sparring section, the Kamite section. When you're doing your regular sparring and you're moving around, right, we're kicking each other, we're punching at each other, we're moving around, right, we're doing our things. In here, sometimes it's good to work on initiating lower body takedowns. The first technique I'd like you to work on is called an iron broom. So what the iron broom looks like from here is on your partner, like this. So me and John are going to face you and we're going to do an iron broom nice and slow. From here, just face this way, John, with that. You can fake high. You come down, get your hands down there, get to the side, and you come swooping all around. You hook his leg, and you come up like here, all around. So one pace, ready, go. Right there. So when you're sparring and you're going, maybe, boom. Or you get a guy coming up with some high kicks over in this way with his, with his lead foot. 
You just in here like this, you spar it and whoosh, right in, and you might follow it up with an axe kick. So when you're doing the iron broom, let me see, come this way so you can see it nice and slow. You're here like this. You just can't go down, but you're kicking you right in the face. So you have to maybe, you know, you got something going here. Well, he's picking up his leg and he's busy putting it up and down. And then from here, right in. Works very effectively. Just take him right out. And you can get right on top of him or get up. That's the iron broom. The reverse concept is called the dragon tail. Very similar to the spinning hook, but it's leg locked. You fake, he throws a kick, whatever he does, you're blocking. Come down, support, come around, come around. My body weight is not over here, my body weight is here. Hit his leg, boom, and he'll be going right out. And then from there you can be doing some follow up techniques. The stun of him hitting the floor, if you do it right, if you do the iron broom and dragon tail right, the timing is, is fantastic. You won't even know what happened. From here, hope we're not confusing you by going right and left side, but I want you to be working both sides of your body. You hit, come through, and you're right around. A little quicker speed from here, and you're right up. So if I was doing it on John, put this foot forward so we can see the same side. From here, let's move in camera range here a little bit. We're sparring right, boom, and whoosh, and you're right in. It's a very effective technique. Be very careful not to do this to your partner across the front. It's very good into the street, but you can really injure your partner. So try to keep those sweeping techniques back in across the back. Also, when you're, I say sparring, community grappling, it's all the same. When you're working on your, um, Grappling techniques. Kind of move right over to the next section. Some advanced strangle holds you can be working on. You can be on the floor or upright. Notice our system is so diverse. You have these techniques out here. You have these techniques up here. You got your elbows in here, and you have your enclosed stuff. From here, get this ridge here, right up here, just right up. When John feels it, he'll be tapping. Boom! Right in there. I get this hand right in, and come right up. He also, that's if he goes to tackle me. Boom, I can get in there. Let's say he throws a kick towards me, and I get behind him. Hit here, hit here. I can just take off his oxygen right here. He's got a good, good view here. What I'm going to do is, the both bones my arms in there. So right there, I'm going to take my arms and go like this. And it increases dramatically and on. So from here, he throws a little kicking technique. Boom, off to the side. That could be the end of it right there. That could be the end of it right there. There's two shots. Taking out the air supply and causing massive pain that way. It's a very advanced stranglehold. But the bones go up this way. It's not a lot of strength involved. From here, this <laughs> way, <laughs> you got him down to the floor. You got one of those ankles. You went to flip him, maybe you didn't want to. All of a sudden, you're down on the floor with him or you're upright with him. What we want you to work on is keep locked in there and just locking out right here in the back of the calf. Just relax one second. Let me show them. Lock the leg in there, get it in there. Take this, get this right in here, up into his right there. Be locking up right in there. It's a very step it on me here like that. When you get it, you'll feel it. You should help you find it really close. It'd actually, be very good to learn with him. He had a pair of shorts on. Another advanced leg arm lock up when you grapple him. Let's say you came in here, you did something like this to him. Oh, you got my microphone there. Is just kind of locking his arm up this way. You got the wrist lock from earlier, and you're pressing this way. Or you can lock your arm in and lean in. Or from here, you can be across his chest this way and locking up in here. There's so many techniques that you could be doing from here. It's incredible. There's so many. You could be in here, off his arm, coming in, coming down, coming this way, and locking up. There's so many of them. Work, thank you, John. Work on these advanced ones. Get a partner during class, and you're working with them, and he's experimenting back and forth. The snake boa seizing drill from the earlier ranks will definitely help you get, and you'll find some really advanced ones that once you get them, you feel very comfortable with them.
Okay, now we move to more public part of the park, so let's see if we can squeeze in. We have our bench here, and we'll go to some car techniques. Let's say you're here, you're minding your business at this beautiful park here, and, I don't know, attack comes to the front. Let's handle the easy ones first. All of a sudden, somebody's yelling or whatever, and they come at you. See the leg check? So, me, as he comes in, commission 16. See leg check? Boom. Bring him. Just watch it again. From here, you mind your business, and you have to go explore with these things. Boom. Bring him right in. Let's say he comes in, and you've got the other hand coming more. You'll be here like this. You can be bringing him right in. Right in. Right in. He comes in with the other hand from here. Like this hand here. Trap, kick, bring him right in. Boom. Bang. Boom. Wham. You can get your arm caught in there. From here, I know you're going to want the questions from the back. Everybody's going to want the questions from the back. That's why you found this nice strong bench here like this. Guy comes in from the back and grabs you. Now, what are you doing? Well, you could be doing the easy thing, which would be to try to get to the end and then over and around. I don't know if you were thinking like that. Over the end. Also, you can just try to use your stomach if, he, if he's leaning over far enough. If he's got you back like this, that's one thing. But if he's got you and he's leaning over like this, you can just actually bring him right over and injure him. Right over. And come in through that way. You'd be surprised. But you might say, well, what happens if you can't do that? So from in here, as he got you like that, you got to go like this, and maybe you're like this, wham, and you just kick him right up in the back. See how my body move like that? That's what we're talking about, to be creative like this. You're in here like this, like this, you can't breathe. Maybe you got to come up one step, turn it, and then wham, kick him right into the base of the head. Pull him in this way. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about with this sort of activities, is to be experimental, to play around with it. Before we move on to the braking, uh, in the past section with the no mind drills, it talks about elevators and cars and things of that nature. I was out here in the park, elevators are going to be kind of hard to find. But I think you, you got the spirit of what we're talking about, just to practice in different areas. Make sure you practice with safety and one step at a time, build up the things. Uh, practicing in stairwells, people ask me about that. You know, there is merit to it, but there's always a lot of danger to that. So I'd have to really kind of say, publicly to kind of back away from that there. But try different things, different terrain, when it's wet out and all different things like that. Okay, let's get started with the braking. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, John do a uh, spinning kick to keep the nature of the rank with green with a strike. Now, when you're doing your braking, always practice in the air a lot with your, board, your, with your idea first, then practice in a bag and build up to it. There should be no doubt in your mind that you can go through the board when you go to do it, whether it's multiple boards or whatever. But build up to it. You should never be like going from zero to 60 right away on braking. So from here, and each belt rank is something different. Now we're up to the spinning kick move. Yes, good. And you notice when he went right through, you probably hear that in the microphone, he came all the way through and actually got me into the stomach that way. That was very good focus in coming through. When you're board breaking, a lot of times your instructor will have you wear a headgear, a mouthpiece, and will teach you really how to hold it so you don't injure yourself. Which I'm glad that just as John was striking, I contracted and exhaled a little bit so that my stomach was tight. And just for that reason, it worked out pretty good. Grab the uh, bag. Now from here, when you go to advanced testing, we'll have a stopwatch. Somebody will be counting. And you gotta do four very effective quick strikes in a second. What four is John gonna throw? I don't really know, but when you're doing it, you know, you come in here and he says go for me. And you're go. moving like this, right? You're moving and you're staying, he says go. Go. One, two, three, four. It could be something as simple as that. Or you could be getting more fancy. Go. One, two, three, four. Boom. Is that five? Five. Uh, whatever. You got the idea. I mean you can start off. The idea is to get one flow. If you start off when he says go, go. If you start off with a jump kick, it might take you a little bit longer to get going. But you could be in here. Go. And just it's one quick flow. That's like a second and a half there. The idea is just to get flowing with it and get going. Later on, you can get very quick strikes by just moving in and going. So I'm going to say go for John a few times. And he's just going to move right around. Let me get my microphone out of the way here. Ready? Move around with me. Go! One, two, three, four. Go! 
One, two, three, four. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Five, yeah. Ready? One more time. Go. One, two, three, four, six. I think it was six in there. Okay. This is off to the side. Thank you. When you're doing it, just get the flow and go with it. Start experimenting. If you get kick, kick, punch down and with the knee, then move on to something else. Eventually be doing five in a second before you test for your black belt. A quick note on that speed requirement. Many times, um, actually in my school, we have a heavy bag that's about six foot, about 110 pounds, the shape of a man. And when you're doing your speed requirement, it's a little bit different on that. So work on different bags too. Also, uh, the rank of green with brown stripe, we have a written exam on martial art technique. How many stances in a particular form? In combination number 11, what is the first strike? What is the name of the takedown? Those sort of questions. You're studying it, you should be very familiar with the terminology so that you can pass it on someday and also you can have good conversations with your peers and the assistant instructors and the instructors in your school. So ask questions. You should always know what stance you're in, what the goal of the movement is, and what really the actual name of the strike is and where it's supposed to be and what it's going to. Okay? That's what you should know. Ask those questions before and after class and during class. An interesting book that, uh, in fact, it's a very famous book in Oriental literature. It's called the Tao Te Ching. T-A-O, next word is T-E, and then Ching. C-H-I-N-G, I believe. A uh, copy I like to suggest to you, there's many copies up there, is called The New English Version by a man named Stephen Mitchell. It's a very interesting book. When you refer back to it as you're reading, you might read a paragraph and say, well, that really relates to something that happened a few years ago to me. You might read a chapter and say, eh, hey, what is that? And then you might come back six months from it and read it again and say, oh, I know what they're talking about there. So it's all about kind of trying to open up your eyes to different things. It's a very um, philosophical book. I think you'll enjoy it. And it's a very famous book uh, in uh, the Oriental uh, scope of literature. There's some other books that are very famous. We're going to have you read them too. This is, one of the, this is probably the toughest book reading up through ranks so far. So if you have a little problem with it, give yourself some time, keep working, and I'll see you in the future.